The sound of Moog was always something that I really was kind of warm to, was was always gravitated to, whether it was in, in, in uh, you know, bands, you know, electronic bands and back in the day, uh, the Moog sound was always the thing that stood out. Um, when I had an opportunity to uh, buy a MIDI Moog, uh, this was my first real piece of uh, Moog hardware uh, back in the day. So we, you know, we're talking nearly 30 years ago mm -hmm. and it obviously came out before that, but uh, for me to actually have hands on on, on, on a piece of kit like that, uh, to get those bass sounds and, and to, to really work uh, the filters and, and, the, and the oscillators, it was just amazing. I'll, I'll just you know, sit there at, at some nights in my studio just playing that module alone. And uh, as time progressed, as time went on, um, I built my studio in, in the UK. I built on, uh, I've actually built two studios in the UK. And then uh, coming here to Australia, uh, I built my uh, studio, writing studio at my house. And then eventually where we are now uh, is uh, the full, fully French recording studio here in, in Melbourne, Australia. Um, the first thing I went to go and get was the big mini Moog, which we have over there. Mm -hmm. And so I can get back, back into my hands on ideals of making music. But then in the same vein, the same, same idea, was these new beauties. I would say each one of those modules, the Mother 32, the DFAM, uh, and the Subharmonica, each one of them individually blow me away. And then when you run these all together just on their own, they're, they're like the full band. They're like the full electronic band just on their own. And I kind of like the idea of, of just get, like go into these machines and see what can come out and have fun. Um, and I've been doing this now uh, for about a year or so using these and I'm, and I'm still not still not totally immersed in them, but every day I get to them, I, I'm getting more and more connected with these modules. Yeah, we, we, we just basically finished off a remix for Deborah DeLuca, uh, a track that she created called Flora. And we found a sound at the subharmonica that we wanted to use. Um, and it li literally it was like a happy accident, the way how it, it you know, we switched it on, and moved a, a, a few uh, uh, parameters around and everything and found this sequence which was just something we just couldn't program. We couldn't, if we went to go and program that on, off the computer, you know, literally sit there to try and do something like that, it would never happen. It would just be generic. It just would be an, an easy sound to, to create and make where what came out was something of which you wouldn't have thought about in the end of the day. And, uh, and we found that sound, so we utilized that in the remix, which became the, the remix. You know, at the end of the day, that we, we know for a fact that unless someone else has found the same kind of idea of what we, what we found for the Subharmonican, we, we, we would, we would uh, be following somebody instead of leading somebody. So we, lead, we, we led with this sound definitely. And when you hear it in the mix, it's like nothing I've ever heard. So I, I kind of like the idea of utilizing these modules a lot more in my music and my sound because I feel that at the end of the day, by whatever you do, it, you, it's what you've done and what you've created and what you've elaborated on. You know, within, within the, the, the kind of the exposure of the music, uh, of the sound that comes out, which creates the music. So I'm finding myself more and more of, you know, going to my, my live element of, of creating uh, and a unique Colcock sound through these modules. And, and more and more I'm going, working towards that, rather than sitting in front of the computer and trying to make, you know, the element on, on, on uh, the, the ideal of the concept of sound. And that's what I kind of like about it. You can't really put your finger on it, I think. I think Moog was always, you know, created just so you experimented by whatever, whatever came out in the end, whatever you felt was, was something that, that you created that you can feel good about, and then you kind of owned it. But you, you, but you have to record it <laughs> and then move on, you know what I mean, end of the day. And that's what I kind of really like about them. We, every time we switch them on, this is something new or something amazing, something experimental about it. And that's what I kind of like. Uh, it's, 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 it's almost venturing into the unknown of, of creating music. But every time I'm on here, as you can see clearly, as soon as I go, go on, I'm excited. What can I do? Where can I go? You know, what's going to happen here? And, and, that, and I, I kind of, I think a lot of the music from back in the day was made like that. You know, uh, especially in Detroit, in Chicago. 
none of these boys had, had training, had a classical training or anything. None of these guys and girls kind of knew what was going to come out, but what they did know is just something special. So, and, and you only kind of get out what you put in. So you've got to put in the hard yards. You've got to be here for hours and hours and hours just to see what happens. And that's what I really like and enjoy about it. If I, the problem is with me, I do like being outside and, and being with the real world. But if I'm in the studio, and then we switch this on, and then we just basically record it and see which way we go with it. I, I find myself kind of doing an hour set or two hours while, while I'm just going through the motions of, of, of utilizing all these sounds from these modules. Um, but with the Moogs, I find that I go that much further, like a lot further in a sense of, of creativity and wonder, wonder where it's going to go. You know, where is it going to take me? You know, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole, <laughs> but I want to go through it and out the other end somewhere. And, uh, and hopefully when I get out the other end, that there's something amazing and creative at that point. Um, and I'm sure that I will never find it, <laughs> you know, because you're always going through a point of wonder. And, uh, and that's what I really enjoy about these machines.